So uh, controller area network, that's what CAN stands for, and that's the first lesson. CAN, I'll, I'll start out with a few slides as to where CAN is used and what industries and, and applications it fits. So it's used in many places. I mentioned NMEA 2000, which was my exposure, first exposure to CAN, which is actually a pretty small seg segment of the overall CAN industry, very small. Uh, NMEA 2000 was a follow-on to, to an old standard called NMEA 0183, which was a, a, a Serial Bus RS422 standard. And uh, CAN was used for NMEA 2000 and created, supposed to be released in 2000, but it wasn't. It was about 2003 or four before it really got prevalent out there. Uh, heavily used in, 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 in uh, vehicles, automated vehicles I have here, but vehicles in general. Uh, ECUs, electronic control units in vehicles, is, is probably more, more CAN out there in vehicles than anywhere else. Industrial automation, it, it's very large, uh, mostly with the protocol CAN open. We're, we're, we're actually just starting to understand uh, more of how large that is and, and opportunities there. Uh, very much in medical equipment, we, we have a lot of CAN customers doing medical, as I hope some of you do as well. Uh, I got vehicle engines and controls, J1939 and others which uh, were Alex and, uh, and I are kind of familiar with, I think. And, uh, so aer aerospace, uh, robotics is really big for CAN. And then I, I just kind of threw this one in. Is where anywhere where a machine is talking to a machine, it's likely it's using CAN for, for that communication because that's what it's really suited for. And when I say a machine, I mean uh, an electronic sensor, a, a temperature sensor. Uh, many, anytime you see the word smart sensor, it's probably can because that's what the smart is, is indicating. It's got a processor in it. It's probably using digital communications via can. So as, a, as opposed to a dumb sensor or an analog sensor, which just sends a, uh, you know, has an analog resistance that changes with whatever factor it's measuring. <clears throat> Some examples, uh, again, the most prevalent, probably the ECU in the upper left-hand corner. Uh, the Kavasa Memorator 2 channel in the upper right hand corner, I had to throw that one in. Some other sensors, a couple of these from the marine industry where I used to work, rudder angle indicator, it's getting rudder angle off a, off a CAN bus. This would be a, a, uh, a GPS compass. These are, these are pretty neat, they operate via CAN and they have two GPS signals in, two GPS antennas in there. And GPS is so darn accurate when you're that close to each other that, that by doing calculations on where those two antennas are this apart, far apart, it can that can determine very exactly what your heading is. So they call that a GPS compass. Uh, motors, stopper motors are can controlled a lot, smart motors. And, and this would be a wind temperature <coughs> sensor with a GPS and a bunch of other things built into it. So this is a, an overall, again, in the marine industry, uh, hooks up via can. Uh, so here we have uh, some actual applications, uh, things that, that can, uh, and some of those components in the previous slide may actually work in. Uh, the, the, the pack car truck, which I worked on extensively when I, when I was with them. Uh, a lot of different heavy equipment uses can, lifts and things like that that you see around are, are heavily uh, big users of can. The automobile, of course, is where it started and where it's uh, most used. I, I found a little picture of an automated lawnmower up there that, that uh, they use quite a bit of can. And uh, Lars Berno uh, likes to always point out that, that it's used in, for actual control surface controls in some high-speed fighters jets as well. So it's very reliable and, and uh, uh, able to be used in, in pretty serious applications like those.